All right, so back over here with this scene, I'm going to wrap this up here and uh, show you how to make this effect uh, a little bit nicer. So if I hit play, what I've got is this. Now, I've already uh, saved the cache for this point cloud, so what I'm going to do is with this point cloud selected, I'm going to go to simulation and hit load cache from selection. Now, as usual, that little trick, you need to go to the multi-physics node and turn this node off, so uncheck solve. But you can see the point cloud here is now much, much faster, and everything is mixing in very, very nicely, so you can see. It looks very fluid-like. Now I'm using a very small amount of particles for a, a real, you know, project or whatnot. You want to increase your particle resolution. Right now, these particles don't have a lot of resolution. You can see how there's these little small clumps with these big particles. Um, I use the resolution of, I believe it was 0.3. You probably want to use something like 0 0.2, 0 0.25, something like that, uh, for this specific scene right here. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take those particles. I'm going to go to the Create menu over here, and I'm going to go to Polygonizer create surface from point cloud so we get a, a fluid mesh let me lock this down let me hit play there's the fluid mesh doesn't look very good so we'll increase the detail uh, we'll take off this smoothing stuff here what I'm gonna do is with the mesh selected I'm gonna go to uh, the deform create menu and go to Lagoa fluid shaper I'm gonna leave the default settings for the fluid shaper I think that looks fine and back at the polygonizer PPG I'm going to reduce the ISO level a little bit so I get more volume for the uh, mesh. And now if I play this, there we go. Looks pretty cool. The fluid's going to mix in and stuff from both sides, from the yellow particles and the blue particles. Let me go to the point cloud and I'm going to hit F3, go to its visibility settings, turn off render visibility. I don't want those little uh, spheres to render out. If I render this, I just get a gray mesh, which looks interesting, but doesn't look right. What I want to do is I want to get the colors from the particles onto the mesh. So we actually did this in a previous video uh, where I showed you how to actually transfer color data from, um, from a particle system over to the polygonized mesh. So let's go over that very quickly here. Uh, let's take the polygonized mesh, refresh the ice tree down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Create menu, create a new ice tree. Let's move this over. We're going to need to get the point cloud, so I'll drag and drop the point cloud down here. We're also going to need the uh, polygonized mesh, so I'll drag and drop the polygonized mesh. I'm going to open up the polygonized mesh PPG, go to the Explorer. I'm going to dig into the polygonized mesh, so expand the polygon mesh uh, node right there. You should see all these little blue icons. You want to go to node position. So let me go to node position right here. I'm also going to need to go get a um, get closest location. So get the closest location node. Bring it in over here. Take the value uh, of the uh, point cloud and plug it into the geometry here. Take the value of the node position, plug it into the position here move this over we're going to need a get data node so let's go get that get data bring that over here open it up type in color and we're also going to need a set data so let's go look for set data there it is set data compound I'm going to plug this into the ice tree over here I'm going to take the value of this guy plug it into the value over here. I'm going to take this location and plug it into the source for the get color. Then I need to go to the set data. Let me open this up. And let me lock down that PPG. I'm going to come back to it in a second. With the polygonized mesh selected, let's go up to property and grab yourself a color at vertices map. So I'll click on that. That's going to give it a color at vertices map. Let's go back to the set data node over here. That's why I locked down the PPG. Let me go to Explorer. Let me go to the Polygonizer. Open that up. Open up Polygon Mesh. Open up Clusters. Open up the UV Cluster. Dig into Vertex Color. And grab this colors data right here that has the blue icon. And that's it. We're almost there. You can see in the viewport that now the mesh has the yellow and blue color on it. 
which is fantastic. If I hit play, you can see how the colors are uh, being represented on the mesh, which uh, looks pretty cool. So let me close this. Finally, if I hit Control 7 to open up the Material Manager over here, I already have a fluid material set up for this automatically. So I created this earlier. And basically, it's this sort of network. It's got an architectural material. It's also got the Mentor Ray Subsurface Scattering Simple Shader. And it's mixed with a mixed two colors node over here just to create an interesting sort of effect. It's already got the color map lookup, so you don't have to worry about finding that or anything like that. It also helps to open up the color map lookup and uh, choose the type of map you're looking up. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the polygonizer in the Explorer. I'm going to right click on the fluid material and hit assign to selection. Once I do that, if I open up the color map lookup, you notice that I have this drop down box or option window right here where I can choose the map that I want to use. So I can use a color at vertices, uh, a vertex color map, color Lagoa mesh thickness, so I could use white maps as well. I'm going to use the vertex color up here. That's going to work out just fine. Let me close that. Now if I render this, you're going to see that the mesh now has these colors, and it's using this really cool subsurface scattering sort of effect. So I end up with a really interesting sort of uh, fluid simulation here. Let me just play it a little bit more so we get some more fluid to collect in the bowl. Render this again. And you can see what I end up with. I end up with this really weird looking type of fluid that's mixing up down there. You can see the yellow and the blue. Looks pretty interesting. So Lagoa gives you an infinite number of possibilities. The amount of cool effects and neat things you can do with it, both realistic and fake sort of stylized effects, is uh, it's up to your imagination. So you're limited by your own imagination. So that's going to do it for this entire tutorial. I've gone over a lot of things, not just creating multi-phase systems here at Flagoa, but we've gone over cloth, we've gone over mesh advection, we've gone over fluid sims, uh, doing post-sim effects. We did a couple of different post-sim effects, both changing color based on uh, density. We also saw how to add bubbles to fluids. So if you want to do something that looks like some soda or Coca-Cola or something like that, you can now do that. We've also saw how to do uh, different types of materials and we also saw how ice automates a lot of the process simply by using these different commands in the ice toolbar on the left and we also saw how to manually plug and pipe data in together and stuff um, and do different types of things you also got to see how to transfer color information from particles over to your polygonized mesh uh, thanks again to Stephen Blair for uh, coming up with that ingenious solution and uh, that's pretty much it. That's going to do it for this, uh, this tutorial here on Lagoa with uh, ICE and Softimage 2012. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching. Uh, take care and have fun using Lagoa.